Since Survivor Series is coming up this Sunday, I decided, hey, why not do a Survivor Series theme Q&A video? Although I have a venture or a guess that this video probably won't see the airwaves of YouTube, so to speak, until Sunday. But nonetheless, to give you guys something to get a little uh, time filled as you wait for Survivor Series and hopefully get you a little amped up for it. I know I'm just a little amped up for it. I won't say I'm like over the top. Wow, I can't wait for this. But I'm a, I'm a little excited about it definitely so thanks to all of you that submitted your questions that was a pretty good job by me of fighting back a burp let's go ahead and get started chrysler official have you seen bobby Roode lately did you see him tonight am i marking too much or does he have main event written all over him take this one at a time i have not seen bobby Roode lately i did not see him tonight that would assume that i watched the nxt takeover show which i most certainly have not yet and i don't know if i'm going to but i might sometime this upcoming week you know especially during like the thanksgiving holiday i might watch it doesn't mean i'll review it but i might watch it am i marking too much for him no you can mark for whoever the hell you want um and does he have main event written all over him i don't know if he has it written all over him but you know there's some potential there although i wonder if they would go there with him, but who knows? I mean, they did it with AJ Styles and did it pretty quickly, so why wouldn't they with Bobby Roode as well? Um, Maestro96, do you expect a screw job type finish this Sunday? No, and furthermore, what match would you be referencing that would require some type of screw job finish? I mean, maybe there will be screwy finishes, but you said screw job finishes in alluding to the greatest work in the history of the business, which was Survivor Series 97 screw job. Uh, let's see here, what next? Michael Corvin, on your list of favorite Survivor Series moments, how high is Chuck Norris super kicking Jeff Jarrett on that list? Oh, look at me. I'm big, stupid Jeff Jarrett, Memphis mid-card piece of crap. Bam! Super kick straight in the fucking chops, bitch. Because he's Chuck Norris. And Chuck Norris is a bad motherfucker. And the only thing that scares Chuck Norris is Haku. That, that ranks right up there amongst the greatest Survivor Series moments of all time. Of all time! I mean, he super kicked the shit out of that bitch. It was awesome. Ryan Steele, if you had to pick one Survivor Series event as your favorite, which one would it be and why? Um, I do have a Survivor Series review series on this channel. I suggest maybe you go and watch every single one of the videos in this series. Enjoy. Um... 2002, I always thought was a great show. 97, based off of the sheer importance of the show um, and the significance to the business, both positive and negative, short term and long term. I mean, those would be two of them that jump right off the top of my head. Granted, I'm not giving this much thought. Uh, Ghoul 98 American. Will Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg stink out the joint again? And thoughts on the cruiserweights getting boring chance? Thoughts on the cruiserweights getting boring chance? When you tell the cruiserweights to stop doing the cruiserweight stuff because the rest of the main roster, especially the main event scene, are doing cruiserweight stuff, and then you present them in a way that we're not supposed to care about them, and you don't get anybody invested in any of the characters, it's not surprising. That's why I said going back that the cruiserweight division being added to Raw was stupid. It was always a better natural fit. If you were going to insist on having one, it was a better natural fit on SmackDown. It's sad, but not surprising. The Schleg Daddy was right again. Fucking imagine that. Uh, Lesnar Goldberg stinking out the joint. I think we're in a much different place 12 years later, 12 and a half years later. Uh, both of these guys actually kind of give a shit. You know, because let's operate under the assumption that this is Goldberg's last match. You know, I think he's in a different place than he was 12 and a half years ago where uh, WrestleMania 20 was his last match and he really didn't care. He was ready to get out of town. This time it's about legacy. This time it's about... Uh, putting your stamp on things, going out the way you want to. So I think even if he's hurt, he's going to work harder to be better. Um, I think Lesnar, he's in a different spot too because obviously he's got more matches in him, so he's not going to want to necessarily go out there and stick up the joint. I think a lot of it has to do with how how much Brock Lesnar's going to want to do business. I mean, if you're expecting some big grapple fest, then... This is the wrong match for you. If you're expecting a lot of spots, this is the wrong match for you. This should be a high-power, high-impact type of match. Uh, that's what it should be. That's what it deserves to be. It should feel like a big fight. Now, if Lester's just sitting there suplexing the fuck out of Goldberg, then, yes, there's a chance that this match could stink up the joint. The dynamics of it could be all fucked up, too, since Survivor Series in Toronto are 
Toronto fans going to hold Bret Hart's concussion and career ending concussion at that against Goldberg. A lot of interesting dynamics at play, or I guess we're going to find out Sunday night. Um, Skank Hunt 1960. From a storytelling standpoint, who has the most going for them in the five versus five men's Survivor Series matchup? I'm assuming you're talking about the Raw versus SmackDown match. I don't know. Because to be honest with you, I really haven't been paying that much attention to the product in general. Catching glimpses of it here and there and watching occasional highlights just to stay somewhat plugged in. But yeah, I don't know what to tell you at this particular point in time. Um, probably the best character right now out of the ten participants would, I would assume, be Jericho. I mean, his foo-foo ass. Um, ENC 98, top three favorite Survivor Series matches ever. Go watch the Survivor Series review series on this channel, and you'll see what some of my favorite matches ever are. Uh, Mega Power Star, I'm a big fan of pro wrestling. My first question, do you think Okada, Tanahashi, and Shibata will come to WWE? Will Ibushi sign a contract? Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I really could give two shits about Japanese wrestling. I'm being honest. Uh, Tanahashi, isn't he the one that never fucking loses, isn't he? The Japan version of Cena. Would he really want to come to a situation where he's not going to be treated as such? Okada um, is a hell of a talent, I will say that. And I would like to see him come to the company. The other guys I'm not that familiar with. I, mean, I know the names, I'm just not familiar with their work. So i, I got to say, I really don't care. Then he asked, what do you think about Ray, real Kurt Angle coming back with John Morrison, Ray Mysterio, and Jeff Hardy in WWE? I'd assume at some point in time all four of them will be back, honestly. Um, kind of indifferent to it. I wouldn't mind it, but it's not something I'm eagerly anticipating, I'll put it that way. Um, let's see here. Ryan Steele, who do you think will be getting the diesel spot in the traditional 5-on-5 and 10-on-tag tag, tag matches? I don't know. In the tag matches, it should be Big E. It should be, but I don't know if it will be. In terms of in the um, main match, good question. I don't know if there will be one this year. Michael Corbin, what Survivor Series match are you most excited for on Sunday, not including Lesnar Goldberg Part 2, um, the part-time Boogaloo, <laughs> Boogaloo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, probably the 5-on-5 five five, um, Raw versus SmackDown men's match. I'm excited in part because you got the bigger names in the company at the current time in the match, and you know you got the champions in the match. There's no world titles on the line on this show, so it's probably that one by default. Uh, Les Juan James, you say Bret Hart is Mr. SummerSlam and Taker is Mr. WrestleMania. Who is Mr. Survivor Series in your opinion? I don't know. Now, I don't have the, the ability to sit here for several minutes and rack my brain thinking about it. That is a good question. Very good question. Um, Dusty Rozier, which wrestlers can you make a legitimate argue be, for being Mr. Survivor Series? Stop asking me who's the Mr. Survivor Series. God. <laughs> Watch, there's going to be another question. Who's Mr. Survivor Series? I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good question, though. I wish I would have spent more time, you know, actually going over these questions beforehand so maybe I could have come up with an answer. Uh, Alex GT 1412, would it make sense one day if Taker had his last match where his career in WWF, WWE started instead of WrestleMania? Yeah. I mean, that would be one of those whole full circle type of deals. It's just, it would be so tough with Taker in particular. Because, eh, fuck the bullshit of Shawn Michaels. This is dumb. Don't buy that WWE propaganda bullshit. The Undertaker is Mr. WrestleMania. He's worked more WrestleMania matches than anybody in history. He's won more WrestleMania matches than anybody in history. He's been the primary drawing card for more WrestleManias than anybody in history. And most certainly, at least, if you want to argue about who's been the primary draw for more WrestleManias, we can at least say he's been the primary draw for more WrestleManias than Shawn Michaels. And that's a fact. Um, so having it in Survivor Series makes a world of sense. But if you were going to get a last retirement match out of Taker, would you want to blow it at Survivor Series or would you want to have it at WrestleMania? And that would be the ultimate challenge and the ultimate crux. Yes, in theory, it makes a world of sense. But honestly, would you rather have it be his last match at Survivor Series and come full circle like that? Or would you rather have it be at the event that is The Undertaker and that is WrestleMania? I mean, so 
That's what I would say. A uh, Musgrave 322. Should Big E come out looking strong in the first ever 20 man fuck fest, the 10 on 10 uh, tag match? Uh, that's not the first ever 20 man fuck fest. That's why I can assure you of that. Yeah. I mean, there's been other tag team uh, Survivor Series matches, so it's not the first. Uh, should he come out looking strong, somewhat get the diesel treatment? Maybe. Maybe, although in a tag team match situation, it's kind of hard for him to get that shine as if he was in a traditional five-on-five -five match, let's say. Uh, Larrikin, what would your reaction be if James Ellsworth defeated Dolph Ziggler in a retirement match on Sunday? If that happened, then I'd probably go buy a James Ellsworth t-shirt for beating that suspect sissy's ass. That's what the fuck I would do. And I would celebrate, and I would regale one more time, loud and proud with all of you up there. Ziggler! That's what would happen. Let's see here. Who's next? Come on, goddamn computer. Uh, somebody asked me the question. I can't see who it is at the moment. If you could recommend three traditional 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series matches to view, what would they be and why? I would tell you, like I've told all this, go check out the Survivor Series review series on this channel to get some recommendations. See, that's how you cross-promote and plug stuff. Uh, Alwyn to the Greatness is his name. If you had to pick a favorite Survivor Series match, what would it be? Uh, by the way, the old podcast was great, and the Ultimate Warrior tribute deserves applause. Well, the Ultimate Warrior deserves applause. I'm glad you enjoyed the tribute. And to answer your question that's also coming up, did I listen to that Kendrick? I have listened to that Kendrick before. Honestly, I do not give a shit about music in general anymore. And most certainly do not give a fuck about the rap game. I stand by what I said about the rap game being just like the rest of music, a lot of bullshit. And the rap game is crap because it's all about the beats and it's all about who you can collab with on your fucking track. And it's that simple. Kendrick is probably one of the best in the game. I do not dispute that. He is by far the least of the problems. But in the grand scheme of things, while he might be good, if he is the best in the game today, it is similar to the WWE when you say, well, this person's great or this person's great. They might be great by today's standards, but what does that really say about today's industry? It's an indictment against the industry, if anything else. Um, a favorite Survivor Series match? Watch the Survivor Series review. That's how you do it. Uh, w. Rain Foster Podcast. How would you rebook the 2001 Survivor Series 5-on-5 match? You would go all the way back to the beginnings of the invasion angle, and you would say, hey, if I'm going to do this invasion, I'm going to do it right, and I must have all of the people that you could associate with Survivor Series, or not Survivor Series, excuse me, with WCW, and go at it. Now, I gave you a Monday Night Wars dream match on my all-time Survivor Series fantasy card. So, you know, you'd have the NWO Sting and Goldberg. Seemed to be pretty sensible to me. What was so stupid about it is you do the invasion angle, but the NWO doesn't come in until early 2002. Ric Flair doesn't appear until the night after Survivor Series 2001. Sting doesn't make an appearance for another 14 damn years. Goldberg isn't there for another two years afterwards. You don't get Luger. You don't get Savage. All these big, huge names. Steiner didn't come until the end of 2002. All these big, huge fucking names, and they weren't involved with the invasion angle. That's why that shit was stupid. The number one way you fix it is you have to have those big WCW names involved. The number two way you fix it is to stop going against the grain uh, to appease Vince's ego and give him some jack-off satisfaction. The WWF must work as the heels in that angle because they are the heels because they put the other guys out of fucking business. What is likable about that? And insisting because it's the WWF, working them as anything other than heels is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Fuck the invasion angle, piece of shit. Uh, Petty Wop. That's a hell of a name there. Do you think Undertaker will have some involvement in the Survivor Series pay-per-view? I'd like to say he would. You know, if we're going to go on this whole thing of he should have been, what well, really doesn't make sense about it from a SmackDown standpoint is you've got Shane McMahon as being announced as the fifth person. But The Undertaker, and this is where you talk about the stupidity of the writing in today's company. Some of you may spin it and say, well, he's going to go after whoever maybe cost Team SmackDown Live the match. Da, da, da. Okay, you can buy that. But at the end of the day, this is the fucking Undertaker. And if he is that concerned about 
SmackDown representing and representing well, and this is his graveyard, and this is his show, then why in the fuck would he not say, I'm going to be the fifth dude in this fucking match and make sure that I take care of business? That would seem to be the sensible, more logical thing to do. But again, I just talk about sensibilities and logic when it comes to WWE writing, and that just made me look like a fucking moron. I would hope that he would, but I would expect that he'll be more involved the night after, or the week after Survivor Series. But it would be cool to see him there. I mean, you brought him in for that. You know, you might as well. Um, Ryan Diaz, do you think WWE could possibly make this Survivor Series worse than last year if they tried? Oh, anything is possible. Anything is possible. A second coming of Ali. What would you think if Goldberg Lesnar ended the way Lesnar Orton did with shorter match length to shock the audience? At that point in time, if it ended like that, it really doesn't shock the audience. It just kind of pisses them off. Now Lesnar's going to smash another dude like that and open him the hard way. You know, what happened to the business actually being a work? Like all these people that talk about, including guys like Ric Flair and so on, that try to... Uh, downplay others in order to advance their own legacy by talking about work rate, work rate. At the end of the day, the whole concept of a work is to make it look real and have it be anything but. Is to make it look like you're beating the absolute fuck out of somebody and you're barely touching them. The art of a work is to actually get the crowd involved in the right way. There are very few people in the business today that are actually good at the work. So therefore, consequently, there are very few actually good workers in the entire business across the world today. Because it's too much about shock value. It's too much about the high spots, the spectacular moves. It's about the come, the, the crappy comeback. It's about the lame-ass, poorly executed, poorly timed finishes. So there aren't very many good workers. Um, but off of that side note for a second, no, you can't do that. Because... You just did it with Orton. Now he's going to do it with Goldberg. Again, you already run into the problem of people start to care less about Lesnar matches because he's always viewed to be able to win. Then at this point in time, why would you care? Especially when the matches really aren't that fucking good anyway. So there's not a lot of entertainment value there. Now if a Goldberg doesn't beat him, now who the fuck does? Who the fuck does? I mean, Jesus. Uh, Spawn4288, do you see Shane screwing Brock at the pay-per-view to set up something for the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania? The simple answer to that question is, that's what I would do. If you're going to insist on having Brock Lesnar versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 33, you need something stronger than Brock Lesnar wants F5 Shane McMahon. You need something more than that. You need something that makes Shane look like a credible option. You need something that really advances that story to where Brock Lesnar actually would care to give a fuck about working with Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 33. Henceforth, as a result, from a story standpoint, the best way for this to happen is for there to be a bit of a surprise and have Shane McMahon interfere, help Goldberg beat Lesnar. That way somebody beat Lesnar, but it's not in a way that's going to diminish or hurt Lesnar in any fucking way. And now you've set up the table for something hot, potentially, between Lesnar and Shane. That is the only way to do it. This company is stupid enough to where they'll just have Lesnar cream Goldberg and then he'll go rolling into 33 against Shane, and that's dumb. Why would you care about that match? Now all of a sudden he interferes and gets involved to help Goldberg win. Now you've got Goldberg as a headliner for the Hall of Fame. Maybe Goldberg returns a favor and helps Shane McMahon against Lesnar at WrestleMania. There are, it leaves you more flexibility and more options. That is how it must be done. Now hopefully the WWE, somebody is smart enough to say, this is where we need to go if this is the path and destination we're choosing. Um... K Sports, what's the most underrated Survivor Series match in his history? Knock, knock, who's there? Survivor Series, Survivor Series who? Survivor Series Review Series, check it out, that's who. Yeah. Uh, EJ Varner, Survivor Series 98, was it a great pay-per-view? I would tell you to go check out the Survivor Series Review Series, and you should. But yes, in a large part, you know, me being a guy that, especially when you look back, through the scope of history, I like to see when special moments happened or big moments happen. You know, while I'll sit there and say that the tournament concept led to a lot of rushed matches and so on and so forth, at the end of the day, the goal was to establish The Rock as a top guy and get him ready for Austin at WrestleMania 15. And in the meantime, set up some good business between The Rock and Mankind. So if you look at it strictly from the standpoint of not the show itself, 
But what happened and what happened as a byproduct and a result, it absolutely was a great show. In terms of a great show to watch, eh, not so much. Ahmed, why is the show four hours? Is it really not? Wait, what? Oh, they're seriously making this show four hours? I didn't realize. Oh, I'm just looking to the forward to the show less now. See, I you sat there and I was just a little bit excited about Survivor Series this year. Not a ton, but a little bit. And then you had to remind me or inform me, because I wasn't sure, that this show is supposed to be four fucking hours. That's going to lead to a lot of long, drawn-out, stretched-out, boring-ass fucking matches, if that is the case. That is ridiculous. I get the concept of you want the big four to be the big four, and you want them to stand out as being different, especially when Raw is three hours, and then most of the other pay-per-views are three hours. How do you make them different? You make them longer. I don't necessarily know that that's the case. If anything, I would sit there and say, put the absolute biggest, most important matches on one of these big shows and have the show only be two hours. From a, from a non-in-person viewing experience, that would be ideal. You told me Survivor Series was four fucking matches, show is two hours. Man, that could be a really action-packed, non-stop two hours, as opposed to a long, strung-out four hours of boredom. God damn it, four hours. Fuck is wrong with this company. It is a direct reflection of the hardcore audience and, you know, loving four-and-a-half-hour wrestling shows. Now the company is giving it to them. Uh, Charles Thomas, do you think the WWE can get some buzz going to the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania next year? Let's certainly hope so. I think they'll try and find ways to manufacture some buzz. That's where maybe some of that dumb talk about wanting to bring Conor McGregor in on Raw comes from, which I hope they don't do because it really is not going to accomplish anything positive for them other than a short one-term blip on the radar. I mean, because who the fuck are you going to bring Conor McGregor to work with? You're not. So then why the fuck are you bothering with it? A 150-pound shrimp, what's it going to do? Come out and interrupt Brock Lesnar? Bitch, please. Should the w, uh, Brock's project, should the WWE end special match themed pay-per-views, i.e. Hell in a Cell, Money in the Bank, so that these matches feel more special when we have them? Mm. If the shows are good, does the name really matter? If the shows are bad, does it matter what it's named? I don't know if we need three Hell in a Cell matches in a pay-per-view. That probably is a show that could go away. Money in the Bank, I get, because I, I view that as somewhat similar to the King of the Ring concept where you only had, you know, maybe uh, the two semifinal matches from King of the Ring and then you would have the finals and there would be other matches on the show. I'm okay with Money in the Bank having its own pay-per-view, although, again, I would still prefer that that Money in the Bank match either happen at WrestleMania or now maybe at SummerSlam. Uh, but I'm okay with it. Uh, Duke THS, what are some of your favorite Survivor Series teams ever? It's called the Survivor Series Review Series, Duke. Check it out. Uh, Jason, 1983 or 1983 Jason, my dyslexic ass, says there is no dog. Uh, what do you think about Goldberg's comments that he fucked up his shoulder and his body shit after a spot on Raw? Uh, that's why he probably should have come back five years ago. Um, we'll see what happens come Sunday night. Uh, that's, that's what I got to say. Rhino Van Dam, when will the gobbledygooker be introduced, in, inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame? Hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> you got a set of legs like my mother-in-law, pal. Ha <laughs> ha, And Roddy Roddy Piper on commentary, his reaction. Oh my God. Survivor Series 1990, an iconic show for... Two of the most noteworthy debuts in history, The Undertaker and Gobbledygooker. And I got to say this, for those that want to shit on The Gobbledygooker and talk shit about it and everything else, over two and a half decades later, we still remember The Gobbledygooker. The Gobbledygooker is more famous from a wrestling fan standpoint than a lot of the performers. The Gobbledygooker, good or bad, is more over than most of the main WWE roster is today. Just say it, think about that. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Um, I think that's it for right now. I'm running out of time. So I want to thank all of you for submitting your questions. This was fun. I will be doing a Survivor Series review because, believe it or not, I'm actually going to try and watch Survivor Series live Sunday night. Should be interesting. Maybe I'll even tweet about it during the show. Hell, who knows? See you later.